just want to give you just a brief comment here overview of last week. Thought we played with great effort and great toughness. Uh, the goals for our game were to play great defense, have an edge on special team, no turnovers. We accomplished two of the three, obviously not the turnover portion. Um, you know, we had three pre-snap penalties and three lost turnovers, and that really raised havoc with our first down efficiency, which put us behind on down and distance on offense. You know, I thought we played in an electric atmosphere. There was 50,000 plus Temple fans there, the third largest crowd of all time, 12,000 Temple students. That's after the first week against Villanova. We had over 30,000 Temple fans, and we had over 8,000 Temple students. So I think that's really significant um, numbers. Those are the real numbers that I think speak to uh, Philadelphia, speak to Temple, speak to major college football in this area. Um, I certainly can't be responsible for the you know, lesser number of Penn State fans that might come here, but the, the Temple fans, I've never seen a more electric atmosphere, and I've been told by those that have been here a long time, they've never seen a more electric atmosphere and never seen a team play harder. So those are really important things that happen. I'm real proud of our team for that. Obviously disappointed, we, as we all are, uh, in, in our inability to grab that win. Um, talking about Maryland here. Uh, Maryland's an explosive offense. Uh, they're, having four, they're averaging 488 yards per game, 31.5 points per game. They've got great balance. They're 170 rushing, 318 passing. Their quarterback, Danny O'Brien, 67% completion rate. Uh, the running back, uh, Dave Meggett's 5.1 yards per carry. They have skilled receivers. They're a high tempo offense. Give you a little background. On defense, they return seven starters. They're very big, fast defense. They run the ball real well. Senior linebacker Kenny Tate, number six, is an all-ACC player safety last year. He's moved the linebacker. Very active guy. Uh, number 40, Matt Robinson um, uh, is a linebacker as well, as well as uh, number 48, uh, Eric Franklin. Um, I'm sorry, Matt's a safety for him. Matt's a really, uh, uh, he's a big safety. He's made a lot of tackles for them. He's got 21 tackles thus far. Andre Monroe, number 93, is an active defensive lineman. He's been a great uh, addition for them. He's very explosive. He's had three sacks. Um, okay, where am I here? Quarterback. Now, we've, we've got two quality quarterbacks here. Both have played a lot of football for us. Uh, we decided to start Chester Stewart. That doesn't mean Mike Girardi won't play. All playing time is based on how our players perform in the game. And that's how it is at every position. The decision was made by our staff based on game performance. Uh, they're both aware of the decision, and we're really looking forward to uh, getting down to Maryland, having a great week of practice, a great Tuesday, a great Wednesday, great preparation throughout the week, uh, going down to Maryland and uh, playing uh, the brand of football that we've played in terms of being physical, in terms of being tough, in terms of being a competitive team that plays with passion. Those are the things we set forward to do, and we have uh, every intent that that's going to continue um, as we head down, uh, obviously, to play Maryland. It's an exciting time for Temple football right now, and uh, there's so many great positive things happening right now, and we've got to keep uh, we've got to keep progressing. All right? Any questions? You guys what have? stood out to you with Chester? What stood out the most for you to make Chester the quarterback? We just felt like right now, uh, uh, based on the game tape, that we felt that that's who we want to go. He probably runs some of that spread stuff, you know, a little better than Mike. Is that a strong consideration for you in terms of? things he can do? I think they both can run both. I know there was some take on it maybe being different than that. I didn't. I don't know why. <coughs> um, everybody has certain strengths and, you know, it, it, you know, accentuates certain things, but they're both very, very capable of doing both. Um, so, but uh, th that's, that's where we're headed. We made that decision and that's where we're headed this week. But uh, I stress to you again, you know, as I said in that statement, we have two very competent quarterbacks. Um, and uh, that's not to say that Mike Girardi is not going to play, but that's where we're headed. And I just wanted to get that out there and tell you we clearly where, where we're headed. Would you prefer that one or the other step up and take uh, take charge as number one, or do you like the uh, prefer the two back uh, two quarterback uh, system? It's not a two quarterback system. I, I've heard that. I don't know where that's coming from. It's not a two quarterback system in any way, shape, or form. It's just a simple fact that we have two quarterbacks that have played a lot of football here, and. You know, um, you know, we're given the opportunity for one to take it and run with it, mm -hmm. and you know that that's where it is. But uh, you know, two quarterback systems are usually when you have two different guys and you're trying to do two different things. It's not really anywhere near the shape or form of what we want to do. <coughs> that's what you're asking me. That's a good question. Um, but that's that's not that's not our intent in any way, shape, or form. You know, our intent is to to get the right guy in there that's going to consistently. Go and right. uh, 
but in the same breath, competition's healthy. And, you know, um, I'm not a baseball guy, but, you know, sometimes great pitchers, you know, it's not happening. you got to bring a relief pitcher in. That's, that's, part, of, that's part of what it is. Uh, wouldn't it be perfect if one guy had it all and could go, the, then, yeah, that's, that's terrific, right? Change is not, we're not changing the change, but that's where we are. Has he done stuff in the, with him practice or even just in preparation over the past couple of days to kind of really seal that decision for you too? Just beyond what you saw in the game paper is it strictly off the side? I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's never one thing. It's always a collection. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, where we, that's where we are right now. How has he responded overall, Steve, just because not, not playing the over, being suspended for the over, and then bouncing back to the point where he's... He's handling... I think they've both handled themselves extremely well. They've been selfless. Put the team first, and uh, if you had to say what's the biggest positive, I'd say the fact of how how they've responded, and, uh, and that's a, and it's, and it's been very much a positive. And uh, they, they clearly, you know, like I said, they've been informed, you know, they've been informed, and, and they they clearly get it. And uh, that's that's not always the case, but that's the case here. Did you feel about the team? Obviously, coming off a tough game, put a lot into it. Now you got to get right back playing another tough team on the road. What mindset? What did you see from the kids so far in a couple of days after the game? Well, um, I think you know we obviously were with the team on Sunday. Uh, Monday is the players' day off, and uh, so um, I think this is a, a team that's got strong resolve. I think they're um, I think they're a team that you know uh, likes football and they want to compete, and uh, you know. Like I told you, I think I said it last week too, you know. I mean, you know, you put yourself in the arena um, and you hold yourself open. Uh, they went and competed like heck. And they, I thought they, uh, golly, man, I mean, we played hard now. We played hard. And um, we had some issues that we, I, I, I referred to. Um, we played arguably one of the very top defenses in the country, as I told you last week. Um, so. We knew that that would be some tough sledding in there. There's no great mystery. And uh, I thought our kids responded. So I guess to answer your question, I anticipate that they're going to have a great Tuesday and going to respond. And that's what you need to do. And when you play big time schedule, um, that's all part of taking the next step in a program. Do you know what I mean? Taking the next step of the program is being able to respond, not being a one hit deal. You know, that's, that's not it. And, uh, so I think they have great perspective on that, and obviously we'll have to uh, see how the week of practice goes and have a better gauge. You said most progress usually is weeks one to like three, four. Yeah. So then for three weeks. <coughs> where, how, do you, how do you gauge that so far, where they've come from, yeah. where well, they were from going over and where they are now? That's a good question. I think I thought great progress in week one and two. I think we jumped from week two to week three against a – big jump up in opponent. You know what I mean? It wasn't a, a graduated deal like that. That wasn't the case. I thought that as a team, I thought we handled that really well. I mean, if you grade it and you look how the defense played, the defense played against that team, you would say, well, I mean, wow. I mean, they stepped it up. They played hard. Special teams stepped it up. There's, I'd like to tell you it was exactly what we wanted. It wasn't, but we had some great moments in special teams. Um, I felt on offense that we had three pre-snap penalties and three turnovers. So that's not a positive, you know. But what you have to understand is that what I just said, we also, you talk about we step up now, we had to go against, we didn't just go against a BCS defense. We went against a upper echelon BCS defense. So you can't lose sight of that, you know. I mean, it's easy to lose sight of that and just look at it all for one. But if you're evaluating growth, you can't do that. And... I thought we did some really good things, but those things that I mentioned really hurt us. Why? Because there's not that great a margin for error. So if you have your turnovers, if you're a better team and you turn the ball over, you can overcome that. Right? But when you're a matchup team or playing a team that's really talented team, you, you, that margin, it, it shows really harder on you. And I think that's what happened in that game. So the disappointment is that we had the three turnovers. The disappointment is that we had those pre-snap penalties because that really affects your first down efficiency. And when you get behind down and distance against a really good defense, kind of what you saw is what starts to happen. And you're hunting and pecking. 